Sabi ba? Happy vending. So in this episode, we're going to install this override switch kit, which I got from Royal Vendors. Uh, the purpose of this switch is, now right now I have this machine in a block mode because it's in a school, and I was told by the school that it can't vend during the school day. Too many students were coming down getting drinks. So if you look at the sign, it says, will not vend from 7.35 to 2.30. So I programmed the machine that at 7.35, it turns off uh, the VEN circuit in it, and you see on the displays here, it says no sale till 2.30. And I also programmed it that it will turn off the lights in the machine so that the students sort of say, well, it doesn't look like it's on, it's not vending. This bypass switch, once you install it in the machine, and it's a little key switch, it's a little kit, it comes with the switch and the wire that connects into the control board of the machine. It's about $65. They have one for the G3 machines and then they have one for the Merlin 4 machines. And the switch is just a basic key switch like this that you'll install on the outside of the machine. It has you know, on off contacts and then this wire and it has the directions and the wire plugs into the switch and then this little connector will go into the control board into the slot for a key. I can have it override the timer on the lights. So once you turn this on, the lights will come back on. I can have it override my block on the, the vending of these selections. You can even have it that when you turn this uh, key on, it would go into a free vend mode, that everything would be free in the machine. Or you can have it set up that you turn this on and it makes nothing vend in the machine. And you can even have it go, uh, when you turn this on, it turns off the compressor, the cooling system in the machine. So there's a lot of different options that you can control with this outside key. I'm gonna have it so that when I come over and I activate the key switch, it's going to put the machine back into vend mode and turn on the lights. In case there was a day, like an in-service day, where there's no students in the building and there's a lot of faculty or teachers in the building and I want the machine to be vending, I can just simply come down, hit it with the key, and I don't have to worry about opening the machine and reprogramming the uh, control board. So to get started, what we're gonna have to do is drill a hole for where we want the switch to be. And the ideal spot is next to this uh, vandal panel that's on the side. And you want to do it over on this side because this is where the control board is for the machine. If I did it on the other side, this wire might not be long enough to go from the switch to the control board. So it has to be somewhere within the length of this wire. Now, I'm thinking right on the side of this vandal panel here. I don't want to go through this because then I would be going through two pieces of steel. And if we look on the other side here, it, will, it should come through right above the bill acceptor, you know, the hopper for the bills. It should come right there, right in front of the point of sale window. And it might be a little hard to see because it's dark over here, but I think there's just enough room for that switch to come through. And then I'll just feed up the wire to the control board, which is up here, and plug it in. It should be a real easy install. But just to play it safe, I'm going to unplug the machine because whenever you're plugging things into your control board, you don't want to have the power go in the machine. You don't want to mess up that control board. That would be a pricey repair. Now to drill this hole, I'm gonna bring in my um, helper, Kyle, again. You might remember Kyle from the banana suit episode. Here he is, he has a drill with a small bit in it. We're gonna do a pilot hole first right here, and then we have to drill a three-quarter inch hole for the actual switch. But first, we're gonna do a pilot hole. There we go. Good thing we didn't go through two sheets, huh? You can see on this side where the hole is coming through. It's plenty in front of the point of sale window, so there's going to be a, plenty of room for that. It should be really good. Now he's getting the other drill with the three quarter inch. I got a brand new drill bit. Get it nice and straight. 
Hold on to this and tighten up. This is dumb. Because it won't go. You always want to wear eye protection when you're drilling, okay? You don't want little pieces of me uh, metal coming into your eye. Here we go. Boom. Okay, keep that away. It's a little rough around the edges, but the key switch does have a little lip that should cover all that. And we'll go in here with a vacuum to drill up all the little shards of metal to make sure nothing's left in the machine. Let's take a look at this switch. There we go. You see it has that little lip. It also comes with comes with this additional shroud. Maybe if I put this piece on first and get it underneath the bandle panel and then put this in. Oh, there we go. That looks good. It covers up, you know, any of the bird areas. That's a sweet looking switch. You got your little double-sided key here. On, off. Oh, this is gonna be nice. So we get this little. Go subscribe to Happy Vending. So we're getting this nut on here. Look Go subscribe you. to Happy Vending. Look at you. <laughs> oh, you're the one that my <laughs> All right, we got a big pair of pliers here. I mean, you really should have like a, a box wrench that, that's that size, but. I don't think I have one here with me, or maybe a crescent wrench. I might come in later to tighten this up, but right now, for now, here are the two connectors that go on the switch. It doesn't really matter which one you put where. Um, it's just an on-off switch. So I'm just going to put them in like that. Now I'm going to get the instructions, and it says to put this in pins four and five on the board, and it looks like it's way up here on the top. You know, way up here. I might want to undo this screw so I can get this weather cover off of the control board just so I can get in there a little easier. I think I might unplug this connector just so I can get in here a little better and then we'll plug this in when we're done. All right. You have pin one and two at the top, pin three is missing, and then under it is four and five, and then pin six is missing. So we have two for pins four and five, and then that little filled in hole is for pin six, which is missing. Straight in. You want to be careful not to bend any of your pins on your in your control board. And there we go. It's plugged in where it should. I'm going to get this connector plugged back in. This is why I power down the machine. When you're pulling in and out connectors like this, you don't want power going to the the board. You don't want to mess it up. And there we go. Everything's plugged in tuck my wires in. I might come down later with a zip tie and just zip tie these up out of the way. There we go. We can power the machine back up and then go into the programming and tell it what to do when we activate this switch. It's booting back up. It's going through its control sequence. So it's finished going through its, its boot up cycle and it's still saying no sale till 2.30. Even if I activate the switch, it won't do anything now because you have to go into the override menu of the machine and tell it what to do when this switch is turned on or off. So to do that, we have to press the programming button on the control board way up here at the top, it's a little blue button. You press that in, and then you come onto the front of your machine, and you should be in the error menu. If there were errors, you'd be displaying them. I'm gonna 
press the second button to go up. And I'm going to go up until I see override. Now, override might be in the password protected menus. The default password on these G3s is 4231. So you press the fourth button, the second, the third, the first, then fourth is enter. So now I'm going to go up and look for that override menu. Block one, block two, they're my block menus. There it is, over, stands for override. We're gonna enter this menu by pressing number four, fourth selection button. And now this would be for refrigeration override. I'm not gonna do any overriding on the refrigeration. I'm not doing that. I'm gonna go up. This is the no vend selection, meaning if I had this and you activated the switch, it would go into a complete no vend mode. So I don't want that. This one is the block override. This is one that I want to use because I'm, I'm, I'm using blocks on the machine right now. I'm blocking the selections during the school day. So to enter this, I'm going to press the fourth button. The zero starts blinking. I'm going to press the second button to go up to turn that into a one. And then the fourth button to enter that. So now when I hit the switch, it's going to turn off the blocks because I've activated the block override. Now I'm going to go up. I want to do the light override too. This is discount vending mode. Uh, it would go into a discount pricing mode. I don't. I don't want to. I'm not using that. Here is the light override. So I'm going to do this one too. Hit four, turn that zero into a one. Press four to enter, and that's good. Uh, and then we're back to refrigeration. So the only ones that I'm doing are the lights and the blocks. And we're good. We can just get out of that by pressing the top one. We're out of that and we'll close up the machine. And we're gonna actually test this out now. Notice it still says no sale till 2.30. But let's put in the switch over here. Let's put the key in the switch and let's activate it and see what happens. Oh. Notice the lights have come on and it's no longer saying no vent till 2.30. So this thing is saying $1. So with a, a simple flick of this switch, this thing is ready to vent. Now if I had to put it back into a block mode, I just come over, put my key in and turn it off again and pull it out and now it's saying, you know, no sale till 2.30, lights went back off. It's just that simple. It's an easy install. So if you want to put override switch on your uh, machine, you can order that kit from Royal Vendors. Like I said, about $65. I ordered one for my Merlin 4 machine too. Maybe I'll do another video installing it in that one, but it's pretty much the same setup. You would just have to put the switch in a different area because that control panel is in the middle of the machine as opposed to being up at the top like this. Well, hopefully you uh, learned something today, and as always, happy vending. That was the coolest thing I've ever seen.